Did you want something to drink in case you hit the yeah. bar? Oh, I don't have my pin. Um, we're live. Okay. <laughs> so welcome to the Plymouth Public Library. Kate Gomes, our leading discussion, is getting ready to have some to sit down. But uh, before we begin, we want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, this is our first talk, book talk of the season, and we want to make sure that everyone knows about our upcoming programming. So if you didn't get something in the mail, that means you're not on our mailing list, so stop by the library and get a library card, as well as uh, stop by and you can pick up. We have the whole calendar, so you can just put it on your refrigerator and find out what's going on all season. So go ahead, Kate. All right, so we're um, here to discuss the first 271 pages of A Game of Thrones, the first book in George R. R. Martin's epic, A Song of Ice and Fire. I wanted to get started with finding out um, what everybody's first impression of the characters is, because we begin the story with a gathering of the primary characters at uh, Winterfell in the north. Everybody's there except for Daenerys, really. So um, I know, Jennifer, this is your first time. You've never watched the show. Never watched the show. Never read the books. So you me your first impressions. What did you think about the Starks? Well, first of all, I found um, reading this very easy. I was a little hesitant because of, of the fantasy you know, element, and I knew that there would be a lot of description of um, warring and characters running around and knights, and, um, but as I started, it opened up with Daenerys, right? Well, yeah, no, and, well, and you can correct me at any point. Yeah, I think well, Daenerys isn't one of the, she's one of the first chapters, but she's not, like, the first chapter. Okay. Um, but she is one of the first ca um, characters that we, we oh, meet. Oh, Bran. Okay, yeah, so Bran's the first one. The Bran's the okay. first point of view character, so. So what I found was each chapter is named by the person that it's going to be about, mm -hmm. so I found that very useful as, as I started to build in my head the family name, which is the Starks mm -hmm. at the beginning. And then the female characters versus the male characters. And I thought right. so it's like a few things kind of fell into place. But uh, as I read, I'm not taking notes or anything. So far, I've been hanging in there with my question. When I ask you something, <laughs> I you actually know that I'm reading it. Yeah. yeah, which is exciting. It's exciting to have somebody who doesn't really know what's going to happen uh, reading it. Um, so, yeah, when we meet the Starks, they're kind of like a normal family in, in you know, for Westeros. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they have their own family dynamics. Arya and Sansa really don't get along. Um, Catelyn's not huge, a huge fan of Jon Snow, Ned's um, bastard son living right. with them. Uh, but they're really a family without t a terribly large amount of conflict. They're just, you know living their lives in Winterfell and everything's supposed to go another lord and they'll all Then of course we have the uh, arrival of the Baratheons and uh, the Lannisters right. um, after we find out that uh, Ned's friend John Aaron has has died, right. um, and now the king's coming to pay him a visit. Uh, did you have any first impressions about uh, King Robert Baratheon or uh, Cersei Lannister? Well, well, King Robert came right in, and he and Ned mm -hmm. went down to the crypts. Mm -hmm. So, so because Ned's wife was killed, Ned, not uh, his sister was his killed. sister yeah. was killed, and he had been she had been married to she had been prom Robert. yeah she'd been promised to to King Robert, and he was still he had still harbors a lot of feelings for him, and you know that um, Cersei's a little jealous about that. You know, she, the first thing he wants to do is go into the crypts, and Cersei's like that can wait, and he blows her off and goes yeah. down with Ned anyway. Um, but yeah, he and he and Lyanna were promised to be wed, and um, part of part of the reason why he raised his banners against the Targaryen king was because the crown prince Rhaegar ran off with Lyanna. He mm -hmm. uh, he abducted her, mm -hmm. and um, that was part of the reason for Robert deciding to take up arms against the Mad King Aerys. Um, the, you know. The, 
the Baratheon line was a good choice for that. They've been having a lot of problems with the uh, Mad King, the Targaryen Mad King. Um, so let me just, oh, they have a code. Yeah. Um, the, uh, he, he'd gotten kind of uh, loopy in his old age. He'd gotten to the point where he wasn't brushing his hair or his beard, so he's walking around with matted hair. and um, He's not clipping his fingernails because he's so paranoid about being assassinated that he doesn't even want a pair of scissors or a pair of nail clippers to come near him. That's how crazy. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, but I just want to throw in that mm-hmm. while reading. To describe the characters, and I'm finding that very satisfying reading. Good. It's been. going to be killing who down the road, and I'm sure they're all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I am just, I'm getting into the, his. Um, Martin's ability to describe people and to settings yeah. uh, so that I can picture the environment that they're in. Yeah. yeah. So um, the Baratheons are actually descended from the Targaryen line. Uh, a, a female Targaryen, I believe her name was Rayella Targaryen, married into the Baratheon family and is actually King Robert's grandmother. So um, they act, so that's why the Baratheon, when when the whole realm was kind of thinking, oh, we don't know about this Mad King Ares anymore, the Baratheons were a natural fit to lead the charge, and Robert was just inspired more by the fact that the woman he loved was taken by Rhaegar Targaryen. So um, that's just a little backstory about Robert's rebellion because I feel um, that the backstory looms so large in the, um, especially in these beginning uh, chapters. You know. It, Everybody's opinions of each other is clouded by their experience during this war. So you have, like, Ned, for example, has very firm. Is that the wife? Yeah, she's 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 the um the queen. Do, you know, I'm not claiming to have this all. Yeah. Do you, did you have um? Did you have? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, strong, strong opinion. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they're um. Wait, is she married to Ned? No, she's married to the king. Oh, she's to the, the king. Yeah, so she's okay. married to Robert Baratheon. Okay, so who, who's the who's the queen? That so who's so married to Catelyn's Ned? married to Ned. Okay, right. So um. Okay. Yeah, Catelyn has. So if you look at, we have these lovely family trees here. Yeah. So <laughs> if you look at the whole book, not the whole book. Oh yeah. When they started describing her. Yeah, that whole beginning was. I think that's what kind of drew me in, also. But you know, your prologue was pretty strong. Well, we're going to talk about the prologue okay. too because um, the very first scene in the prologue features the others, mm-hmm. and um, you know, they're supernatural enemies that live live north of the wall. And wildlings. the very first, yep, with the wildlings, and the very first mm-hmm. scene, they've taken out a wildling camp, mm-hmm. and these rangers from the wall are. Going in there, trying to—they're trying to find the wildlings, and they find them, and they're all frozen dead. But then the scout goes back to tell his commander, "Oh, we found—I found the wildlings. They're all dead." The commander doesn't believe them. We go back. Where are the dead yeah, wildlings? Wildlings. They're all gone. Right. And then that's a really spooky mm-hmm. action scene right. to open the, the story with. And I remember the guy going up the tree was the only one who didn't get killed. Yeah. And then later on, when some at some role at the very beginning, he shows. I think he shows up, but they don't tell you that. It's they him. do. Yeah. He is him. He get killed. He's the one he who Ned decapitated because yeah. he had abandoned his post at mm-hmm. the Night's Watch. Yeah. So what if you? If you abandon the watch, you yeah, that's off with your head. Off with your head. Yeah, yeah. automatic death sentence. Um, so, since we had that really powerful scene in the beginning with the um, the scariness of the others and what they were capable of, um, did you get the impression that they were kind of like a, a serious threat then? Just happening with the law. So yeah. when when Commander Mormount speaking to Tyrion and he's asking him, beseeching him right. to speak to the king on behalf of the wall because there's something going on yeah. north of the wall, did you find yourself kind of agreeing with Tyrion's reaction of not really taking it seriously or kind of 
you know, this is my third time reading it. So while I'm reading it, I'm like, oh man, Tyrion, please tell somebody. <laughs> yeah. 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 But um, well, so these these unreal yeah. characters, dragons, um, dire wolves, um, others. Is there some other ones that? So so when they're so I'm trying to read it in a way where I am not trying to pinhole it to something that I know. Right. I'm just kind of accepting mm -hmm. it as whatever character uh, Martin has drawn up in his head. So right. I don't quite know yet. I mean, dra we all know dragons, yeah, um, and I know that uh, that will play a stronger role. But um, I'm I'm just kind of letting it happen. Yeah. It's just fun. it's really nice. Yeah, because you don't yeah. typically read fantasy. I used to. I read. You did. I read Thomas the Covenant. Okay. Okay, so this goes, do, do you know that? Not you familiar with it. You weren't even born yet, yeah. probably. <laughs> so have you heard that? Yeah. Have any of you? This was like in the 70s, Thomas <coughs> the Covenant, and it's by Stephen Donaldson. Um, and I read The Hobbit and all the fellow, all the Tolkien stuff, but mm -hmm. Thomas the Covenant, very interestingly, starts out, and it talks about a world where uh, climate has gone crazy, and you have one day is sunshine, and one day is rain, and one is fire, and... So it has still stuck with me 40 years later about what's going on with climate change. Yeah. So, uh, so fantasy, yes, I, I used to read. I used to read a lot of it. Then I got into mysteries. Yeah. You know, so I needed something a little different. Yeah, I find sometimes my reading taste cycles a little bit. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting that you bring up climate because that's one of the the strange things about this world that's been created is that like summers can last a decade, and then when you have a winter. It lasts like five or six years, and it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> and it's in um, so the cycle of their seasons is you know they it's still have very their extreme, year. very extreme. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so the cycle of their season. Early August, kind of, or or you know late early autumn, sort of maybe, kind of. Well, you're picturing a world where the north is winter, and because mm -hmm. at some point, I, is it King Robert who talks about the it's summer and, and that yeah. Ned should come down and warm up, and there's a beautiful. So you know, there's some place, some valley, some place that's beautiful and warm. I'm not sure if it's on there. where our beloved Anne Clark yes. is. She so that's going to be a climate much more like that. So you yeah. know, a place where you can grow limes or lemon trees right in your your backyard. Warm but they're all not time. Good. so far. But when it's winter, no. Going like north of the wall, I start thinking of it as being like Antarctica. Trust me, yes. <laughs> winter is coming. Is yeah, yeah. Just be complete. Other other houses use boastful terms like the Baratheon words are "ours is a fury" and the Lannister words are um, "hear me roar." The Targaryen words are "fire and blood," but. It's warm and fuzzy and you know nice and and just to to, to I just this the whole relationship with Sansa and Ar what? Arya Arya that is like family life mm -hmm. sisters growing up um, so are they are they they're Starks yeah they're both Starks okay. yeah so you know there's just trouble. But Ned is supposed the good to, guy yeah. yeah. Yeah, so um, most of the characters, speaking of Arya and Sansa, in the book most of the characters are age 14 or, or under. Mm -hmm. All of the main characters, like Rob and um, Jon Snow, Daenerys, Daenerys is a 13 year old. or being bartered as brides. And well, well I, I think royalty, I think it fits into what royalty, as we know it is, yeah. that you're born into a royal family and your path is already set as to who you're going to marry. So, not you know, that didn't stand up. That didn't stand up. I know, up. I'm different. No. In my reactions. I like that, though, Jennifer. No, <laughs> um, no because I, in the show they did... Make them older. So when you're when you're looking at Jon Snow, he's he's more like in his early twenties, right. or and Daenerys is probably like eighteen, nineteen years old, and right. so everybody's aged up a little bit. So um, I think that 
for well, show watchers, the visual of maybe having a 13-year-old girl married to a Dothraki would have right. been jarring. And, right. and, but when you're reading, for some reason, it's not as upsetting. setting yeah. their lifespans are a lot shorter mm -hmm. and when I was reading this time around I was realizing well Ned probably would have been about 17 or 18 years old when he left for war to fight for Robert and married Catelyn Stark so mm -hmm. for to have the the children be this you know this age when so much is happening with them that yeah that, it, it, makes, it, sense. it makes sense right. yeah and yeah. Uh, yeah um so, when they find the dire wolf pups, the mother has been slain by a stag, and soon after that, King Robert Baratheon arrives at Winterfell. The Stark sigil is the dire wolf, and the Baratheon sigil is the stag. Did the implied symbolism give you a sense of foreboding? Yeah. Sense of foreboding. Yeah. I wake yeah. up in the morning and talk about the meaning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it symbolizes something else. Well, I did. I did like the whole concept that they got that each got a pup and that they named them and they became who. It was like they were matched. Like Lady mm -hmm. is with um, Sansa. Yeah. All over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And sad. Uh, um, very sad. And then, and then, uh, who's who's the pup? Who's I'm not sure if he got a name. Who's hanging around with Bran? A uh, summer. He got a he got a name like towards the end up. of our section. Yeah, right, right after yeah. Bran woke up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. He 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 woke up and his, his name is Summer. It was like the first thing he said after being, <laughs> after being unconscious for so long. <laughs> but that that whole scene with um, is it Jamie? Who's the prince? Joel Joffrey. Joffrey. Yeah. Egging on the, the kids, and then the whole wild scene that happens. It's I find that very uh, real. Yeah. And um, it made me. It makes me mad at the girl for behaving that way. Oh, for I'm mad at Arya. Yeah, because she caught. I mean, it's like he—he's actually showing what can cause all these these different kind of family feuds that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this, this, these yeah things that. Expected. Well, first of all, they were drinking. It was um, Joffrey, yeah, Joffrey and, and Sansa, Sansa were drinking, and so then Joffrey got emboldened. Am I uh, off here? It's oh no, it's on this. Okay. So, um, have we gotten any person like? Anybody? Yeah, if anybody's watching, you can feel free to comment or you know, ask questions, and we will. Having technical.